אבל ברוך השם, אלוהים שלח לנו מישהו שגם עזר לנו לעבור את המים הסוערים האלה. אני מתכוון לגום הגיאר, איש טוב. עזר לנו לעבור את המערבולת שהיינו בה, וללא ספק עכשיו אנחנו עם הפנים קדימה. One sports reporter asked him if he is the Messiah of Beitar. Channel 10 labeled him a superstar in a 25-minute special. And Guma Aguiar has said himself that he sees God's hand in his life. But is the American-raised multi-millionaire who has become the financial life support of Jerusalem's soccer team on a mission from God? Do you think God sent you here to help the Jews? You know, I'm going to answer that question, but I want to make sure that you understand, everybody understands this. The answer is yes. However, he did the same thing for you, for you, for you, and for all of the Jews that are out there. All of us have been called to help the Jewish people and ultimately to help the world. Young energy tycoon Guma Aguiar caught the attention of Israel when he saved the Beitar soccer team from financial peril after its previous owner, Arkady Gaidamak, announced that he would stop financing the team. However, this philanthropic gesture was not his first, for in the beginning of the year he donated eight million dollars to Nefesh Benefesh. Last Passover he gave half a million dollars to Chabad for the second year in a row, and he also sponsored the 2009 March of Living which brings students to Poland to see the concentration camps of the Holocaust. You know, Nefesh Benefesh, we pumped a lot of money into that and there's a lot of people here that have families now and they're building communities and they're you know, and it's growing the whole, the whole um, population of Anglo-Saxon, you know, or Anglo-Jews are coming over here. And, you know, that's a tremendous benefit. But it was ultimately when I got involved with the teams that I, I helped, that the people here in Israel felt like I was helping. Aguiar admits to having earned $200 million cash from his work in the energy field, in addition to his current shares of the equity in the companies he owns, Guma is estimated by some as being worth over a billion dollars. In his own version of a rags to riches story while working as a tennis instructor in New York over a decade ago, Aguiar was offered a job in the stock exchange by one of his clients. Eventually, he moved down to Texas to learn the ropes of the oil industry, found investors to start his own dig, and made it big after discovering the largest deposit of natural gas in North America in decades. It doesn't matter if somebody has a PhD and has written books on finding hydrocarbons, they still probably have never found 1,000 cubic feet of gas, you know, so, and that's not a lot. Um, you know, when you're talking about trillions of cubic feet of gas, you know, you can pretty much find that in a lighter. Aguiar was born to Jewish parents in Brazil, but moved with his family to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where he was raised Christian. He returned to Judaism after a phone call to Rabbi Tuvia Singer, a rabbi famous for bringing back Jews who have turned to Christianity. Aguiar called Singer to express his anger over Singer's activities, but after a conversation that lasted hours, Aguiar started his journey back to Judaism. After starting to practice Judaism, Aguiar soon visited Israel and decided to move to Jerusalem with his wife and kids at age 30. I came to Israel for God, you know, because I wanted to be closer to the center of what I felt was, you know, where he would want me to be as a Jew. You know, I hope I die in Jerusalem, you know, with my, I, I hope that I'm here for the rest of my life. Actually, I don't know if I die, but I hope I'm here for the rest of my life. A believer of the coming of Messiah, Aguiar is outspoken about sensitive religious issues in Jerusalem, like Jews being allowed to pray at the Temple Mount. This is something that us as Jews, we've been waiting for for a very long time. And I'm sorry that the average person might say, oh, well, who's this guy talking about this, talking about that? It's their fault that they've never heard this before. It's their fault that they don't want to study or they want to stay ignorant. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to shut up just because people might be uncomfortable. You know, this is, the fact is that this is the center of the Jewish people. The fact is, is that this is the place where it all happens and where it will happen. Aguiar owns real estate all over Jerusalem, including the eastern parts of the city. He says that he admires the Moskowitz family, who owns the controversial Shepherd's Hotel site, and that he often donates to the same cause as they do. I thought that it would be a good time to, for everybody just to take one second and reflect on the fact that if it wasn't for Hashem, none of us would be here. And, you know, he's been looking out for us. Although he speaks of divine guidance in his life, Aguiar told J-Post TV that he only performs the duties that he considers obligatory of every Jew. And when he addressed the nation, he addressed the nation and, and he never said, 
hey, I want you to do this. It's like, no, the nation has to do this. Most ironic about the American raised multimillionaire who can no longer buy a pack of cigarettes in Jerusalem without being recognized by the store owner is how little the Anglo communities of Israel know about their fellow English speaker. Now, can we hear the first two words from you in Hebrew? Shana Tova? Chag Sameach. Shana Tova. Okay. Benjamin Spear reporting for the Jerusalem Post, J Post TV.